All right, now we're at the point in our tutorial where we want to record cues and cue lists. You might be like, David, we're finally there. All I wanted to do this whole time is record a cue, right? But while you can jump to recording a cue and you can do that as the very first thing, honestly, you're just building bad habits that aren't gonna serve you well for the future. Understanding the underlying structure of patching, creating groups, the 2D plan and presets uh, really is going to help you to build cues that are effective and have good programming habits that are going to serve you well in the future and keep you from being frustrated with yourself when uh, you, if you have sloppy work and then you have to go update things, change things, and it becomes a headache. Nobody wants a headache. Cues. Cues are really simple. They are what we press, what we bring up a fader to play back a complete look upon our stage. So one press, you get everything you ask for. Okay. Uh, cues, as we mentioned before, are made up of presets that are applied to fixtures and that which we select either individually or in groups, right? So we've been over all of this and now we want to go ahead and build our first cue. Very simple. So what I'm going to do here is we're on our main bank here, uh, which in this show file has a lot in it already. I'm just going to double tap here on the right on 11 through 20 so that I have these faders out in the open so they're easy to work with. Then we'll select some lights, apply presets, and then let's go and record a cue. So just like recording a group, just like recording a preset, we hit record, we press where we want it to go, and then we type a name. Uh, it's a little bit different because it hasn't created the queue yet until we type the name. And there's different queue list types, which uh, we won't go over right now, just for the sake of simplicity. Okay, so I'm going to call this, uh, you know, cross magenta, da Vinci, press enter. Now we've got a cue. Let's play it back and see what we've got. So clear twice, go ahead, press play. We see the lights fade in, they go magenta, they're crossed, okay? Let's run through another example quick to show you a little bit about how cues get stored and what gets stored and what doesn't get stored when we create a cue, okay? so. Um, cues are made up, of, they're put into cue lists. If you put a single cue on a fader, it's a cue list with a single cue. If you start to press record and, and hit the same cue list again, you'll build more cues on that same list that you can then play through using the play button. Okay. Um, but, um, so what we've got going on basically is, do, 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 do. say we go, just as an example, we double tap here and we bring up our DaVinci intensity and we hit play, okay? Awesome. Then we go back to our, our empty bank here and we select those lights, we give them a color, we give them a position, and uh, maybe that's it for now. We press record, we put it on the fader, I'm just gonna give it a generic name called test two, we clear twice. Okay, now, if we come in, we just turn on the console, and this DaVinci intensity playback is not playing. And we bring up this cue, we play it. What's going to happen? Let me show you. In this case, the lights have gone where they're supposed to go. They've changed colors, but they don't turn on. Why? They don't turn on because only what we've selected since we last cleared twice and worked with, only those things get stored into the queue, okay? And it's, it's a little more nuanced than that, but that's a, a general you know, terminology there. That's a general uh, way to explain it, okay? So the intensity was being played back from this playback fader here, which means it wasn't in our programmer, which means it wasn't being stored into the queue because we didn't bring it up, we didn't select the lights, we didn't bring them to that preset, and so they weren't in the programmer, which is here. Okay, I'll just press undo a couple times. So it wasn't in the programmer, okay? Only pan tilt and color mixing was in the programmer. That's all that's stored to the queue, 
Okay, so that's really important too, is if you have faders up, you've got things playing back, they're not gonna get stored into queues unless you actually load them into the programmer, which I believe we, we do have other videos on as well as inside of Word Stage Lighting Labs. Okay, um, that being said, that being said, uh, let's talk about queue lists. So say I've got my test two queue list I just built here, and I've got some info in my programmer, and now we go ahead, let's go ahead and change color, okay? Record, place it in a queue. Maybe we do it again. Record, place it in a queue. Okay. So as I recorded, as I changed things, and I'll clear twice here, from Q1 to Q2 to Q3, uh, I only change color. Let's see what happens. Okay. So we change color to Q2. We hit play again. We go to Q3. We change color again. Why don't the fixtures, why don't these lights go back to their home position of straight down? Why do they stay on? Well, they stay on because they're on from another fader. Yeah, why, why, it is, uh, why are the other parameters staying where they were? Well, that's a concept called tracking. And in modern moving head consoles, uh, modern professional grid consoles like Onyx, most of them use tracking most of the time. It can't be disabled. And what tracking does is it goes ahead and it says, we'll pull up this window called QList Values. It says, okay, in this queue, we've got pan and tilt information. In Q2, we don't. In Q3, we don't. In Q2, we actually do because we load it back into the programmer. But in Q3, we don't, okay, um, because I kind of went in a roundabout way. Um, but in Q3, it shows it kind of grayed out here. That means it tracked through. So in modern moving light consoles, uh, unless you change something and you're on the same queue list, it's going to continue tracking through to lower queues. Now this is super helpful because if you update the previous queue, maybe you change the position, it will update through until that change is made. That's called tracking. Super helpful, uh, but just something to be aware of because if you come from a background of dimmer consoles or, or you don't have experience with lighting prior to this, you may not understand what tracking is and may be like, hey, I just made a queue. It only had color in it. I put it on this queue list and now I've also got position. Why did that happen? Because of tracking. Once you learn it, once you understand what's going on, it's going to help you a lot more than it's going to hurt you, but it can be confusing at first. I remember it was when I first learned it. Okay. Um, so that's really it. That's how to store some basic cues. Now there's like anything in Onyx, there's so much deeper that we can go. And, and we do that at various places, including this channel, including learn stage lighting labs. But for now, let's head to the next video. Let's start talking about effects on our lights. We'll see you there. Thanks.